Good morning, friends. I particularly enjoy when you leave me a comment that says you're sharing your morning coffee with me because, well, that's what friends would do, right? Sitting here in my motorhome, we're in Arizona, north of Yuma, a place called Senator's Wash. Um, let me give you a 360. Lynn's not up yet. The door back there is closed to the bedroom and the bathroom. I woke up to this this morning at about 7 o'clock. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, people often ask, why are you spending time in the Arizona desert in the dust and the cactus? And it's cold here sometimes. Instead of that beautiful, warm, wonderful paradise called Lake Chapala and our home in Ajijic, Mexico. Well, that's sunrise. That's part of it. The other part of it is friends. And... Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about friends. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. I've been catching a lot of um, grief about uh, having been so careful about the COVID virus back in Mexico and bleaching my food from Walmart and being so careful and having the maid not work, uh, to come to the house, and all of those precautions that we took. Um, here I've been making videos about, uh, oh, we've been doing a lot of things here. My tricycle, um, and that wasn't working for Lynn. It's too big and too aggressive and too fast, so I bought her a mobility scooter. And uh, I've made some videos about my Jeep and off-roading, and I'm really enjoying the new Jeep. Um, and I know that a lot of you signed up to see what it is it like to retire and live in Mexico, not uh, what it's like to be in a motorhome like this. But this is the other half of our life, and it is what it is. And... Um, I enjoy having this life and this opportunity to live two very different kinds of life. Um, half a year down there and half a year up here. It doesn't exactly work out that way, but close. Anyway, I started to say that I've caught a lot of grief about hanging around with people uh, after being so careful about the COVID virus in Mexico coming up here to the United States and making a video where I'm sitting around a campfire with nine or ten other people and we're not wearing a mask. I've caught that grief not only from uh, subscribers and comments, but also from my own children. My son and my daughter just like were aghast that I, I texted a picture to my daughter one night about uh, sitting around the campfire and all kinds of excitement about that. So I wanted to talk to you today about managing the risk in a pandemonium. <laughs> I'm having my senior moment this morning, I guess. I've been hanging around with Aja. Her, her YouTube channel is Pandemonium. And uh, I was having trouble coming up with the other word that's not pandemonium, the COVID pandemic. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to talk to you today about uh, the way that I personally am thinking that I'm managing the risk of being out and about in a worldwide pandemic. I don't want this to sound like um, I'm making excuses for bad decisions or sticking my head in the sand or ignoring the facts or being ignorant 
of the facts um, or not understanding the science of the realities of the COVID pandemic. Um, I do think about this a lot and I want to tell you how I have um, thought about managing the risk. I made some notes and I think I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's always good to have ten, right? <laughs> well, I have nine. I have nine things that I've listed as my ways of dealing with not um, totally hiding myself from the world. Uh, I daily monitor the news, and I do that with more than one source of political bias. In order that, I am not um, only getting one side of a story, and that I can have uh, as much balance in my opinions and attitude towards all of this as possible. So that's number one. I monitor uh, as much information as I can. I also, uh, number two, I do my own research and I try to make decisions about what's real and what's scientifically accepted at the moment. Um, I try to uh, understand as much as I can in order to best filter out um, conspiracy crap and the BS, uh, for instance, uh, you have to accept the fact that scientific knowledge or scientific fact is only true in the moment until some other scientific fact comes along and disproves it or, um, better to say, improves upon that opinion. Uh, the earth was flat for many, many eons before it was round. Um, and logic can get you confused. It is absolutely logical and true to say that all of the people who died last year from cancer brushed their teeth. It's absolutely true. And it's also absolutely meaningless. Uh, don't let conspiracy theories and logic lead you astray in your thinking. Uh, there is no causal relationship between brushing your teeth and dying of cancer. Uh, number three, I'm hanging around with people who are part of a nomadic group we're not a part of the normal ebb and flow of society. Um, and I've been with these people for the last couple of months. Number four, we're careful. Um, if anyone uh, we know or is in the loosely associated group would have um, an illness, we would all know about it rather instantly. Um, we um, are a bunch of YouTubers in the desert. We're all very connected by um, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and if anything is going on, Anywhere in Arizona, amongst all of these people that we would associate with, it would be a secret for about five minutes. And uh, that's one of our risk management things, is that we all pretty much know what all of us are experiencing at any given moment because of this um, interconnectivity on social media. So that was number five. Um, 
Number six, we're all outside pretty much all of the time, and there's also here in the Arizona desert pretty much constantly a mild breeze to a stiff wind. And um, I personally have become aware of always trying to be upwind. Just kind of makes sense to me. Uh, number seven. A couple of weeks ago, I spent uh, eight hours in a local hospital for an um, unrelated thing, unrelated to COVID. I had uh, a, a urinary tract infection, and the pain was severe enough that I thought I might be having a diverticulitis attack or an appendicitis attack, and uh, out of an abundance of caution, I went to the hospital with great trepidation because pff, I hate hospitals. Isn't that where you, all the sick people get together to share everything they've got? Anyway, they were isolating uh, people at the, a little tent in the very entrance off the parking lot. Nobody could go into the hospital until they got tested. And um, I did get tested for COVID. Um, that's where they uh, stick that thing up your nose and they say to your sinus cavity, they stick it all the way up to your brain. Anyway, of course, I tested negative. Uh, number, so, um, I don't know if that's part of my risk management, but, but it was certainly part of my um, personal comfort that my risk management is working. And of course, I understand that that was that day and it had nothing to do with the next day or today. But it was a comfort to know that I tested negative after being with all of these people for a couple of months. Uh, Number eight, of course, we all go grocery shopping to Walmart or whatever. We wear our masks. We sanitize the cart handles. We buy more than we usually would so that we can limit our essential trips. We sanitize our hands after we get back in the car. Uh, we're careful. And um, we made a trip uh, into uh, Yuma yesterday, and we went to Fry's Grocery Store. And unlike a couple of months ago, uh, everybody was wearing a mask. I don't mean everybody in my party of four that went in my car and went to Walmart. I mean everybody in, not Walmart, Fry's, everybody Everybody was wearing a mask, without exception. And of course, you know, we um, stay on our six-foot marker in the checkout lane. We're careful when we're out in other people that um, normal society necessitates essential trips into occasionally. Uh, number nine. It's my personal belief that stress lowers the ability of your immune system to deal with things. Uh, I think that you can um, literally worry yourself to death. And so that's part of my risk management is that I don't worry about this too much. I do what I can to be informed. I do what I can to limit the risks. And then I don't worry about it overly. Perhaps number 10 is to remember the serenity prayer. I'll be right back. I'm going to look that up so that I can say it correctly. 
the Serenity Prayer. It was written by American theologian Reinhold Niebuhr. I don't think we're going to pray our way out of a pandemonium. Pandemonium. Panda. Damn, I did it again. <laughs> Pandemic. <laughs> I don't think we're going to pray ourselves out of the COVID-19 worldwide pandemic. However, the serenity prayer uh, might be something to reflect upon at this moment. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change those that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That's my goal, to have the wisdom to know what I can change, what I can control, and what I can't, and not to get overly stressed about any of it. Enjoy your coffee. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up, and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.